And here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win $2,000. And there's also a chance somebody might leave here with $10,000. We also have a secret word, and if any of our couples say it, they'll receive an extra $100. This is the word right here. I don't want to see it because otherwise I would guess it and I would get the money. <laughs> George, who's first? Well, Groucho, remember last week uh, you uh, ran out of time just as we were having a very interesting conversation with Prince Monolulu and Mrs. Dudley. We asked them if they'd come back again this week and perhaps win some money and talk to you some more. So here they are, Prince Ross Monolulu and Miss Madeline Dudley. Would you come in, please? Glad you could both come back. Uh, Prince, you have no idea what a sensation you were. Now, let's see, uh, you said you were a real prince from where? Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. I'm a palasho. I see. And Madeline, where, where did you say you were from? From Chicago, Illinois. Oh, well, that's quite a ways from where he comes from. Huh? As I remember, we ran out of time last week just when I was about to ask you how you met your husband, right? Yes, sir. Well, how did you meet Mr. Dudley? Well, I was a widow. And I was lonesome, and I wasn't having any luck with men, and we lived in this room and house, and I heard this man crying, and I knocked on his door, and I said, Mister, are you sick? He says, Yes, I'm sick of women. I said, Good, I'm sick of men. And I went back to my room, and I got some tissue, and I came back, and we sat down, and we cried over together, and eventually, we got married. <laughs> He was sick of women and you were sick of men, huh? So I thought we'd make a good combination. You make an ideal couple. Now I suppose you're sick of each other, is that right? No, we're happily married. We've oh. been married eight years. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear your marriage is happy. Have you and your husband always been happy? Uh, every miserable moment of these eight years? <laughs> well, we've had a few tight squeezes, but nothing to cry about. Oh. Well, well, did you have tight squeezes while you were crying with your husband? <laughs> hey, I better go to Africa or I'd be a riot there. <laughs> Every marriage has some tight squeezes. Marriage is like a tube of toothpaste. You always hope something better will come out. <laughs> Voltaire. <laughs> In other words, you and your husband are deliriously happy, is that right? Yes, he's a remarkable man, and I feel he deserves the Congressional Medal of Honor to stay married to me. <laughs> well, in what way are you more difficult to get along with than any other married woman? Well, first of all, I'm paradoxical, complex, Oh, I have a dual personality, and I'm a perfectionist. You're not only hard to live with, you're almost impossible to understand. <laughs> well, Prince, let's get back to you. Last week, uh, you told us you're a real prince from Ethiopia, and uh, that you related to uh, Haile Selassie. Now, do you uh, still live in Addis Ababa? No, I'm living on Long Beach. Here, California, here I come. Long Beach? Long Beach. You certainly like those wild, remote places, don't you? Huh? Right, sir. Why did you leave Ethiopia? Well, I never leave it. I came here when there were wooden ship and iron men. When men were brave and, and women were gallant. When man ruled a woman, but today the art of change. And the woman rules the man. To be or not to be? That's the question. <laughs> what were some of the jobs you held? Well, from being a sailor and in the sailing ship... And remember, the cops ship, may be listening, so you be careful what you, you say. You see, well, you see, from the sailing ship, I, I went to Germany and become a Menschenfresser. Yeah. I was a wild man. Yeah. Then I went to a You were a school. wild man? You had to be. A cannibal? I was broke. They put a ring in my nose and stripped me half naked and put white spots on it. I had to play a wild man to get a piece of bread and butter. Ah! <laughs> and the kids run for the line. <laughs> Give you any hasen pepper or wiener schnitzel? No, Mr. Haben, this is fressen. They haven't had wiener schnitzel. Sauerkraut, sauerkraut, sauerkraut and Wurstel. Yeah. Now what else did you do besides then scaring went, the people in Germany? Then I went to Vienna and they put me in the painting school and I went to a place called Milan and Turin and I was a, 
I was in the all winter painting, you know, in the nude and semi nude and all the cherry painting my feathers. This has been my, my stock in trade. You paint? When, you paint? The, no, the children and the students, especially. The students? Yes, yeah, they paint me. You paint students? No, they paint me. They oh, paint you're me the for model, I see. You're the model, huh? I was the victim of their intelligence. I see. <laughs> and then where did you flee after this? I went to Yugoslavia. And there I start singing, I couldn't sing a whistle, so I sang, John Brown's body lies a molding in the grave. This, this must have killed him in Yugoslavia. <laughs> and all the children sing, glory, glory, hallelujah. In Yugoslavia? In Yugoslavia, in Belgrade, and a place called Agram. Then up the Danube, then I came to a place called Poland. So I lived very well there, riding horses. The you were a jockey? No, well, I had to do anything. I had to ride horses, you know, horses, break them in. Well, and you... ride around the circus. Oh. And I put a silk hat and everybody take a brick and throw at me. If I got hit, it was my bad luck. So they knock off the hat. Something sensational. But the worst thing I had was when I came to a place called Sweden. I became a lion tame in my life. And when I went in the cage, they saturate me with something called acetacetate. It smelled terrible. Yeah, but it when kept the, the lion away. Yeah. When he smelled me, he turned his tail, see? see? But one night the lion attacked me. Wah, wah. <laughs> I tried to be brave, but my knee went bent it. And it was just the same I was jumping over the cage. So I've had a, a very good life. You know what? Uh, <laughs> well, it's been a kind of a sedentary existence. <laughs> Quiet, full of solitude. You know, after listening to you, for the first time in 10 years, my job seems almost legitimate. <laughs> Uh, are you still engaged in hoodwinking the public, Prince? Oh, no, I have an honest profession now, sir. Uh -huh. What is it? In England, you call a turf advisor. Type in America, you call him a, a racetrack tout. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you cannot work, but in dear old England, Great Britain, I can work. I have a very big business. How old are you, Prince? I'm 77. Never drink and smoke. That's why I'm living so long. Prisoner war twice. Sentenced to death by the Germans, and I saved my life. What about, uh, have you been married? Oh, I married six wives, and as long as I got money to stop, and I ain't got no money to give me the soldier's farewell. Goodbye. <laughs> you, you're not married, you know. No, I'm looking now for another wife. I'm looking for a wife that don't drink and smoke. That one that like to travel a race course and go to all the great places and see the great things of life. I might find one. Well, I hope you do. What about me, baby? <laughs> Then he's called for. Oh, she's called In order to get her, you have to cry. Oh, no, I laugh. I'm a different man. Well, you shouldn't have any trouble getting a girl. You just keep that hat on, and any girl would be tickled to death to marry you. <laughs> You're going to try my luck, sir. Well, we could go on talking for hours, but I'm sure you're both more interested in winning some money. So let's see if this education that you've uh, acquired in these round-the-world tours is of any help to you tonight. Now, you selected the biblical quiz. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. And before you answer, talk it over with your partner. You ready? Yes, sir. What was the name of the princess whose dance cost John the Baptist his head? John the Baptist Salome. Salome or Salome is right. One right, three more right, and you'll have $1,000. Yes. Now, what key city of Palestine was conquered by Joshua? Joshua. The Jericho, Jericho, and the wall came tumbling down. The wall came tumbling down. Yes, the Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. <laughs> Jericho, Jericho. Oh, Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and the wall came tumbling down. Yay! I can see why he's got six wives. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't got any right now. And you have two rights. All right. What happened at Mount Ararat that made it famous? <laughs> Uh, Moses went to make the Ten Commandments, oh, and the fire that came was, up. That was, well, what do you say? <laughs> now you ask me. <laughs> well, what did you say? Uh, uh, it flew the coop when the bell rang. <laughs> country in the Bible was known as the land of bondage. The land of bondage. Talk it over. Um, land of bondage. E Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. Egypt. Egypt is right. Egypt. It didn't flew the coop that time, no. did it? And you're back on the right track with one right. All right, who is the man from Bethany who was raised from the dead? Lazarus. Lazarus is Lazarus. right. Two right. 
Now talk it over before you answer. He don't want to look in another woman's eyes. <laughs> look at her, Prince. Look at her. <laughs> On Moses' death, who succeeded him as a leader of the Israelites? Aaron. Talk it Aaron. over. His brother, you know, he his is... brother Aaron. I followed the woman his once brother, in my life. His brother Aaron. When the Moses Aaron. died. When no, Moses... I'm sorry. It's Joshua. Joshua, you see, you tell me Aaron. You see, you're wrong. <laughs> Do one wrong again. Don't get the next one wrong. Who is the reputed interpreter of the famous handwriting on the wall? Nebuchadnezzar. No, that was that the thief there. He said, Well, the oh. writing on the wall, take it, take it, halamah, Who interpreted the writing? Who interpreted you know, they One, the, the same for, for one of the I'm leaders. A... Well, who do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Joseph, she said Joseph, I yeah, She's wrong, it's Daniel. Daniel, there you are, you said Joseph. Oh, all right. Now, what does that do it? Do wrong in a row, so you're out of the game. We don't want you to go away broke, so I'm going to ask you one more question for $100. Now, no coaching, please. You ready? Yes. If Monday was named for the moon, which day of the week was named for the sun? According to the ancient... Uh... No, no, according to this. <laughs> Sunday! Sunday! Thanks for being with us. Sorry you didn't win more. You bet your life. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Very young and Dr. Paul Popano are waiting to speak to you, Groucho. So, folks, you can please and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and you'll divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you have around the house. <laughs> Stole that from Bobby Clark. <laughs> Dr. Papineau, huh? your name is very familiar, aren't you? A bartender in Beverly Hills? That's it. Uh, for the last 27 years, I've been general director of the American Institute of Family Relations. Mm. Well, I agree 100%. All relations belong in an institution. <laughs> what are we getting there? Yes, and uh, what is your racket, uh, specifically? Well, we help people to uh, straighten out their marital difficulties, or preferably educate them before they get into marriage so they keep out of trouble. Mm. Well, Doc, we have one of the most fascinating subjects in the world here, and I think it's time we talked about it. Don't you agree? Perfectly. Fine. Well, young lady, what are you doing after the show? Well, I'm meeting my husband. You're Mona Young, eh? Yeah? Yes. And where are you from, Mona? Uh, I'm originally from Oslo, Norway. From well, Oslo in Norway? Have you ever well, been there? No, I haven't. Oh, it's beautiful. I, why did you there? leave Norway, Mona? Well, um... I was selected Miss Norway, so I came over here in 54, for 55, pardon me, for the Miss Universe contest. You really were Miss Norway, huh? Yes, sir. That's quite an honor. Yeah? You know, I was miscellaneous one year at Santa Monica Street. <laughs> <laughs> Are you married? married? Yeah. <laughs> Are you happily married? Yes, sir. I How did you meet sure. your husband? Well, uh, that's a long story. One night, when I was working... They're all long stories. <laughs> I was working at the Moulin Rouge at the time. You were working at the Moulin Rouge? Yes, there were 12 girls from the contest. We were oh. being introduced on the stage. But what did you do at the Moulin Rouge? Oh, we were just being introduced to the public. I mean, you said you were working there. You were introduced every night? Well, uh, we were working. We got paid for it, so I figured it was working. Oh. <laughs> How'd you meet your husband, Mona? That's what I really I'm coming to it. <laughs> um, I had... Well, I'm going away from it. I had two dates one night, and then... Two dates? Yes, and my husband-to-be had also two dates, one with Miss Texas and one with, uh, with Miss Michigan. Oh. So he asked me for a date and... Um, and why did your husband give up dates with Miss Texas and Miss Michigan? <laughs> I often wondered. <laughs> <laughs> well, the man you married must be a real Casanova, huh? He's real cute. Mm. He's six feet four and oh. um, he What's has blue this? eyes and he's a Texan. Mm -hmm. yeah. You say a Texan, he's a Texan. What has being a Texan got to do with it? I mean, how does a Texan differ from, uh, let's say, a fellow from Utah? Oh, they're no different Idaho. from uh, any other Americans. They're just a little more stubborn. <laughs> well, let me get this whole thing straight. Your husband had dates with Miss Texas, Miss Michigan, and Miss Norway all on the same night, huh? Yeah. Well, that's the way with those Texans. They do everything big. <laughs> and better. When they... <laughs> When those Texans play Monopoly, they use real girls. <laughs>
<laughs> now, Dr. Papineau, uh, let's find out some facts about you. Are you married? Yes, been married 37 years. I see. Uh, can you remember way back 37 years ago when you first met your wife? Vividly. Would you say it was love at first sight? No, there's no such thing as love at first sight. That's just a hallucination. If you <laughs> think you're in love at first sight, it's because if somebody makes a deep impression on you, so you're really in just in love with your own sensations or you're in love with yourself all the time. This, this is how you reunite, reunite couples? <laughs> well, Doc, what are some of the main causes for unhappy homes? Well, unwillingness to try to make the thing go, but the difficulties cluster in half a dozen different points. Uh, uh, without regard to the order of importance, their lack of any normal social and recreational life. And of course, they just have to build up one and have a circle of good, wholesome friends. Then <clears throat> there is the problem of the in-laws, which is a very serious one. The really? In-laws break up more marriages in the first year after the wedding than any other one factor. That's pretty tough for us in-laws to think about. Mm. <laughs> then there's the problem, financial problem. Well, in what way do the in-laws break up the marriages? Uh, I don't understand. Uh, by interfering, criticizing, and trying to run things uh, from the wrong, wrong side, according to the point of view one part of the other. usually the bride's mother that's responsible More frequently this? nowadays, the man's mother. In the old days, it was the bride's mother, but there again, we've progressed. <laughs> Doc, I'd like to see you in action. Let's analyze uh, Mona's marriage to this uh, wolf. Uh, aren't you an animal, Doc? <laughs> well, I'm not a veterinarian, no. <laughs> well, uh, Mo Mona, would you mind if we, if we analyze no, Not at all. Go ahead. Oh, I'd have to have something specific to work on. Yeah, okay. Well, how's your marriage waking out, Mona? Oh, every marriage has its highs and its lows. I guess so. We well, got over the worst and we really got happy. over the whole thing. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'm sorry you're so happy because this gives the doctor nothing to work on, isn't there? Anything at we, all oh, that you yeah, complain certainly. about? I got huh? plenty of troubles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did have them. Well, what are well, some of the difficulties you encountered when you first got married? Well, see, when I first got married. The night you left the Moulin Rouge. No. I'd been married for a little while when I came back from work. And um, I felt sorry for all the milkmen, you know, that come from door to door. So <clears throat> I couldn't say no to them. Well, that's a them. good beginning, all right. <laughs> I, so I ended up. I what mean, was this? You were felt sorry for all the milkmen? Oh, yeah. And so what happened? Well, I couldn't say no, so I ended up with milk from seven different companies. <laughs> Well, Mona, I have one of the finest lines of milk in California now. What is your home address? <laughs> in addition to having seven milkmen trying to break your door down, do you have any other problems? Uh, my husband, being from Texas, he loves hot biscuits and gravy. And I like to sleep late, so I don't get up, usually. Can't you cook the biscuits on your electric blanket? <laughs> What have you got to say about a girl, a bride, a child well, uh, bride who is too lazy to yeah. get up and fix her husband's biscuits? I, uh, I think that the husband is entitled to his biscuits and much you more important. Uh, that's one of the <laughs> few times in the day when they can be together and talk over the plans of the day. Uh, she'd better put the biscuits in the oven the night before and set the electric alarm there so it will go off at the proper time waking the biscuits in her boat. And then she and the husband can have a little time there, half an hour or an hour to have a little... Uh, opportunity to talk over the day's affairs. They don't have much time to say. It's highly important that husband and wife uh, have some chance to communicate, that they have an opportunity to uh, talk things over and have some companionship. Mm. Breakfast is one of the few times that's available in the ordinary family. You you're, know what you let me... I think call. he's right. I think the doctor... <laughs> My husband is in the audience, and tomorrow I'm going to have to get up. <laughs> Why can't he stay in bed and make his own biscuits? Like <laughs> Doc, that's right. What you said about a couple meeting in the morning for breakfast, I think is true. There's nothing that lifts a man's morale like the sight of his wife at 7 in the morning. <laughs> when he's, standing, he's sitting at that breakfast table with a half a hangover, <laughs> and she comes waltzing in there with a faded kimono, and her eyes just two slits, and one toe sticking out of the end of her slippers, there's nothing that will consolidate a marriage like that so. <laughs> I'd like to go on talking to you two because this sounds like it could uh, go into a very interesting avenue, but the time has come to play, you bet your life. So let's see how much money you can win. Do you think you have learned anything from this doctor's advice here tonight? Well, I'll have to see how it works out. Let's see. Would you, uh, would you let me know the following day? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I'll try. You can try. tell me when I'm delivering the milk. <laughs>
All right, now from our list of 20 to 21 categories, you have chosen general information, is that right? Mm -hmm. And he was a great warrior. And I'm going to ask you some... <laughs> I'll ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're through. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Now, before you answer, discuss it and answer between mm -hmm. you. What do you call the paper showing the family tree of a purebred animal? Pedigree chart would be your name for it. Well, you, we'll, you name it. We'll stick that. <laughs> Pedigree is right. You have one right, three more right, and you'll have your $1,000. What is the state flower of Kansas? Sunflower, no question about it. Sunflower is right. You have two right now, two more right, and you'll have $1,000. The drachma, D-R-A-C-H-M-A, is the monetary unit of what country? You saw it in Greece, don't, don't you, Mr. Don't Gunn? snarl at me, No, old, uh, I'm not. I just didn't I, follow if up. If you're going to look at me, I want you to look at me with admiration, and not with, <laughs> not with nausea on your face. <laughs> But you agree with me, it's great. Drachma, that's right. You don't have to go any further. No, sir. One more right, and you'll have $1,000. You know, if you win this, he's liable to bring the milk tomorrow morning. <laughs> now, uh, what island was settled by the Bounty Mutineers? Pitcairn Island. Pitcairn Island. Pitcairn Island. Right. He didn't need you at all. You got, it. Huh? You got four in a row, yeah, so you, you win $1,000. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Well, now, wait a minute. You won a thousand dollars. You can keep it and quit, or you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at ten thousand. And you should go over there and sit down and think it over. And if we don't see you later, thanks for being on the show. Doc, uh, turn around this way to the audience, huh? And I suggest, since you're a marriage counselor, before you leave here tonight, you take that lipstick off your cheek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got home. Out of it. All right, George, let's find out what our last couple has decided. All right, uh, Mona Young and Dr. Papano, come back in here, please. Thank you. You're just as pretty as you were 30 minutes ago, uh, Mona. <laughs> Thank you. Are you still in love with your husband? Yes. In that case, you won't win a quarter. <laughs> you won $1,000 so far. Now you'll have a chance to win a lot more, maybe even 10000 Or you can stop right here and keep your 1000 If you decide to try for the big money and fail, you wind up with a total of 500. Now, what are you going to do? We're going to try. You're going for the big money. All right. Now, get together and pick a number from 1 to 10 and then spin the wheel. If any number besides the one you pick comes up, this question is worth $2,000. If your number comes up, this question is worth $10,000. Mm -hmm. What already, number do you want? We decided on number one. Well, give it a fling. <laughs> yeah. We <laughs> should You picked number one and it came yes. up six while well, you were a long way off. So this question is worth $2,000. In Gulliver's Travels, the country of little people was called Lilliput. For $2,000, what was the name of the country where the giants lived? What is it? For Brobdignag. Uh, Brobdignag is right, and that's a tough question. I'm glad you won it. Oh, <laughs> well, you won $2,000. What are you going to do with your part of the swag, uh, Mona? Believe it, I'm going home to Mama in Norway. You going to Mama? Yeah, for a little while. Well, by Joel, I'm going with you. Huh? <laughs> And what are you going to do with yours? I'm going to put a second bathroom in the house so when our grandchildren come out, we can take proper care of them. Oh. <laughs> you mean they've never bathed yet? Well, they, when they were so small, we could go in the kitchen sink. I see. <laughs> well, congratulations for being with us. You bet your life. And thanks a million. That's a tough question.
And here he is, the one, the only... <laughs> well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win $2,000. And there's also a chance somebody might leave here with 10,000. We also have a secret word, and if any of our couples say it, they'll receive an extra $100. This is the word right here. I don't want to see it, because otherwise I would guess it, and I would get the money. <laughs> George, who's first? Well, Groucho, remember last week uh, you uh, ran out of time, just as we were having a very interesting conversation with Prince Monolulu and Mrs. Dudley. We asked them if they'd come back again this week and perhaps win some money and talk to you some more. So here they are. Prince Ross Monolulu and Miss Madeline Dudley. Would you come in, please? Well, glad you could both come back. Uh, Prince, you have no idea what a sensation you were. Now, let's see. Uh, you said you were a real prince from where? Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. I'm a palasho. I see. And Madeline, <laughs> where did you say you were from? From Chicago, Illinois. Oh, well, that's quite a ways from where he comes from, man. Huh? As I remember, we ran out of time last week just when I was about to ask you how you met your husband, right? Yes, sir. Well, how did you meet Mr. Dudley? Well, I was a widow, and I was lonesome, and I wasn't having any luck with men, and we lived in this rooming house, and I heard this man crying, and I knocked on his door, and I said, Mr., are you sick? He says, yes, I'm sick of women. I said, good, I'm sick of men. And I went back to my room and I got some tissue and I came back and we sat down and we cried over together and eventually we got married. Well, there you are. He was sick of women and you were sick of men, huh? So I thought we'd make a good combination. You make an ideal couple. Now I suppose you're sick of each other, is that right?